get um, get the, the frankincense. Have been to an insight. So I am Dr. Yolanda Dukes, and today my guest is Elise Hicks, quantum astrologer, here to tell us all about her intuitive method of astrology. Hi, Elise, and welcome. Hi, Yolanda. How are you? It's so wonderful, wonderful. to see you. <laughs> Tell Thanks. me, I've never even heard of quantum astrology. You've got to tell me everything. It's all right. So this has been an evolution and um, I, okay, there's a, there's a backstory. Okay. I was 12 when my father was given six months to live and uh, that launched us immediately into, into action basically. And many, 12 is this pivotal time pivotal time in so many cultures mm -hmm. for me uh it was my coming of age because i learned then that my father was no ordinary father he was extremely metaphysical and actually considered himself to be buddhist in his mind no one ever shed blood in in the name of buddha mm -hmm. and he he taught me so much about the nature of the universe during that time he did do chemo. He also meditated, pictured himself healthy and took mega vitamins and teas from Mexico. And within several months, that same doctor who gave him the prognosis or death sentence uh, basically said, Dave, whatever you're doing, keep doing it. You are not dying of this. So it was, that was amazing. And that was a firsthand example to me of how powerful the mind is. Mm -hmm. And um, because with the chemo, he was still supposed to die. So um, I, we went to the psychic healing center in Glendale and I learned about the chakras and laying on of hands and uh, protection with white light. And just that was my introduction to metaphysics. Wow. And then for my 18th birthday, my father, who was not supposed to still be with me, um, the, he, his gift to me was a, a reading with an astrologer. And I remember driving home from that reading, just feeling as though I had met a new best friend and it was myself. I truly, truly felt like I understood the inner workings and it's still, I mean, one of my favorite expressions, and I wish I had written this, but it is, I'll often quote it, um, and it's on my website, the larger the island of knowledge, the longer the shoreline of wonder. Mm -hmm. And that is truly, you know, what, what it's like when you start peeling away the layers of who we are to understand who we are. And then, of course, in our relationships, we discover new layers that we didn't even though existed and like wondering the, on the internet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So I've studied um, modern astrology. I I'm studying traditional astrology. Um, I when Jupiter was in Virgo several years ago, I immediately all of a sudden had to study Vedic astrology, which is much more it's fascinating, but it's much more fatalistic. My, mm. uh, my approach is that we are, well, what I know is we're infinite creator beings that sparks of God. And I, I see it much like when we were children and played with dolls or toy soldiers, if we're guys, um, I saw my brother's play their to toy soldiers and boy I can still smell the smell of them melting because of course they were boys and they had to burn their soldiers <laughs> but we so in that experience we pretend that we're in the play right mm -hmm. and I I think that's much what God did when when all of creation has been created and is continually being created we want to experience it, be here. Mm -hmm. And you know, so everything in quantum is very simple. It's society that's complicated. And my guide has a very easy way to explain it. There's only one thing in it, all of the essence and all of creation. And that one thing is God. Yeah. We are but reflections of that 
learning and discovering ourselves as creators and we can see it in everything. Yes, 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 yeah. The, and, and when we remember that, in the, uh, especially in those moments where we, um, you know, where we, where the shadow is coming out to play or where, you know, we're having in our human experience, I think we, we wanted to have some sort of a dumbing down ship or whatever in order to, and that's, I think the ego, we, um, to Forget. feel separate, to have the experience of sex and chocolate and, and all of those wonderful things that are a part of our 3d experience. I think they're more wonderful when I realize that I, that this is not all there is and yeah. that it's just a fraction. And then we can remember, Oh me, Oh my God, it's Dr. Yolanda as me. Yeah. You know, how we show up in our uniqueness and our beauty and we really can let our essence out to play. To reflect that knowledge of each other. Yes. Yeah. I mean, that's, I that's, we, we forget because the remembering, because that becomes that much more profound, don't you think? Yeah. yeah. And it's, well, William and I wrote a book um, several years ago called Wings the Journey Home. Oh, I didn't and know you were out there too. Yes, yes, yes. That's another another aspect of us and um it's a wonderful children's story um you know also for the child within all of us about an eagle who who his first day of flying is uh caught in the initial winds of a storm and he spirals down to earth he's smashed against a cliff spirals down to earth and lands in a chicken yard with a wounded wing and amnesia mm. and so as we were trying to figure out what to put on the, our back cover after like two, three hours of both of us bouncing back and forth. All of a sudden I said, why do we forget? And he said, so we can remember. Yeah. It's just yeah. that simple. It is. So the quantum astrology, I, so I am first and foremost a metaphysician. Uh, that is my heart. Mm -hmm. You know, that was that awakening when I was 12 and I think astrology is one, one of these fantastic tools that allow us to understand so Why? much. Why does it allow us to understand? There is a cosmic um, code, I want to say. And I, I can't fully explain why it is that Jupiter is the benevolent grand uncle of us all. And, you know, Sagittarians tend to be more, you know, happy go lucky and, and, you know, joyful in a way. And, um, Leo's light up the room and, you know, because they're ruled by the sun, you know, here they are. They, and so they are our great entertainers and, and, you know, they show us what it is to express ourselves fully in 3d, mm. you know, and Aquarians are now Leos can be very regal in their way of being there because they are, it's the sun that is ruling them. So they bring that fully expressed ego, which is, which is beautiful and can be can be like wow you are really showing up fully you know and there are other people here too mm -hmm. so the aquarian is the one that says well wait we're all equal no one no one is above me or below me right so we each uh, without going into all the signs but we all have these um each sign represents a very important part of the of the whole and you know we are not just our sun sign mm -hmm. we are much much more than that we have our wherever the moon is and and the sign that was rising when we were born and then of course where the planets fall within the houses and that's a whole i don't think we have time to do a full astrology lesson but i um so my back to the quantum astrology i i do study i do see what is in the chart that seems kind of written and in stone 
like a computer program, we can always download new software, right? And we, um, our understanding, can, we can look at the positive and negative aspects of perhaps a square from the sun to Pluto mm -hmm. um, and understand knowledge is power. Yes. So if you know what is, what is potentially coming up, like for instance, we're in the midst this summer of, um, of tremendous amount of retrograde planets. Now it's, that is, that has actually, I had the experience one day of waking up and saying, thinking it was Monday and realizing, no, wait, it's Sunday. I have an extra day. Now in our, in these, I don't remember maybe 20 years of feeling like time has slowed down a little bit, which is kind of an interesting experience. It's been more intense because it's, it's allowing all of us to experience and go back and reflect on what, what our martial energy is as Mars has been retrograde, you know, what is, what are the things we need to take action in and where are the areas where we're being sort of stifled. So, just so I can, for clarity, when a yes. planet is in retrograde, do the aspects of the planet change or are they opposite aspects? The aspects of the planet are the same. The planet is always, you know, Mercury, who is, who is the messenger, and he rules communication and um, de dexterity within each of us. He also uh, has dominion over communication. So all of our communication devices, like our computers and um, our phones and our technology and all that, that's under the dominion of Mercury. Uh, travel, short distance travel, so our cars. Um, mechanical things tend to be under Mercury's dominion. So when Mercury is retrograde, there's it's that time, it's an opportunity for each of us to step back and reflect about our communication, um, especially in our relationships. It's a great time to go back and revisit um, misunderstandings. Mm -hmm. It's also a time when misunderstandings can be created. So it's very important, and I, I do do this. This is what I heard you say. Is that what you said? You know, because... Yeah. And just in an honoring, because we all have our own perspective, yeah. and, and our own you filter. know, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. So it's it's a one. The, it would be exhausting, I think, if we only ever if the planets were only ever going forward, and that would be physically impossible. Mm -hmm. But so the retrograde times are that opportunity for us to reflect and revisit. And it's funny. I mean, that's the time where when. Um, uh, you know, it's kind of like the old ghosts come back, the, the um, ex-boyfriends or, um, or that friend that you thought you would let go that released. Then they, you know, suddenly pop back up and it's an opportunity to, you know, reintegrate if that's what we choose to do. So, so. when someone comes to you, for, do you, do you call it a reading? When they come mm -hmm. to you for assistance, yes. how do you explain that to them? How do they take advantage of their planetary aspects? So depending on the house where that, where that planet is falling, that will tell me what domain of their life is being affected. Ah, okay. You know, so that really, that helps. It helps when, when my, because I could spend a month on somebody's, you know, diving in, peeling away the layers. Um, so and there's only so much time. And uh, so it does help when, when my clients come with specific questions. So I normally I'll send a questionnaire to them. What are the areas of life that you're most wanting to know about? Or is there anything, anything that's coming up? Because, you know, generally... I mean, there may be the people who are curious about astrology. They've always heard about it. But, um, you know, usually it's when something is really coming up. And, you know. So you did mine, which mm -hmm. was unbelievable. 
I mean, I saw the natal chart, which was just, I was like, oh my gosh, how am I ever going to interpret this? And you followed that right up with an interpretation and as well as a very comprehensive report. So for my example, what would you say about me when you have Scorpio ascending? What does that mean? So Scorpio ascending, Scorpio is ruled by Mars in traditional astrology. Um, modern astrology, we've, we've given Pluto the rulership. I am really leaning more toward the traditional. I, so I do definitely look at Mars, not to say that Pluto isn't powerful. Oh my God. Anyone who has um, had a Pluto transit Mm -hmm. knows that Pluto is definitely still a planet. I'm sorry, astronomers who demoted him. He, Pluto is definitely a planet. But in your case, Yolanda, you have Mars. Your ruler is just barely in Sagittarius, mm -hmm. um, just beyond your 26 degree Scorpio rising. So Mars is right on your ascendant. Mars is packing you with so much energy and intensity because he is ruling Scorp your Scorpio rising. Scorpio risings tend to be more secretive, private. There's, there's so much depth to you that, um, that it, it can be, um, I mean, there's just a lot. There's, there's as deep as the ocean is a Scorpio. So, um, with that Mars in Sagittarius, that, that is much more Sagittarius energy is much more what they see is what they get, you know? So you may have, find yourself in a, a perhaps dance with your intensity and yet I, I want to bring it and people will just have to, you know, whatever you're bringing, yeah. people will, they know they, that what they see is what they get. Does that, does that help? It's accurate. <laughs> I, okay, good. I don't, I don't feel the secret part. I'm not really feeling that because I'm, uh -huh. I feel like I'm pretty much out there. Um, and I don't, you know, just. Yeah. Well, you are also, um, let me also say for the audience and for people who are getting to know and love Dr. Yolanda, she is having a Sagittarius party in her chart. <laughs> and Ju Jupiter is basically Mars, Jupiter, Neptune, all right there within just two degrees of each other. It's like Jupiter has his, his, very, very benevolent arms around both Neptune and Mars. And then the moon and Venus are also in Sagittarius. So she is, she is having a wonderful party there and Jupiter rules Sagittarius. So it's such a blessing. It's like you've always had, uh, no matter what's ever gone on, Yolanda, have you felt as though there's always been an angel or a guide on your shoulder? 100%. Yeah. That's yeah, Jupiter. Always, That's a yeah. blessing to have to have him at home where he loves to be. And for any of us that are following our actual, you know, what where the planets are right now, we will get to have Jupiter coming back into Sagittarius at the end of this year, you know, yeah. starting this fall. So you will be having a, oh my gosh, your planets are just going to be lit up. And um, I'm getting chills, actually. It's, <laughs> yeah, I'm, it's so exciting. The only thing is when, when Jupiter is moving over a very sensitive point, like the moon or, or rising or something like that, we can tend to gain weight. So that's, that's the one drawback. It's like, you know. That explains you know. a lot, though. <laughs> okay. That does. It does really explain a lot. I like, <laughs> stop beating myself up and just realize it's, it's planetarian. Hey. So yeah. also I was doing some reading, attempting to, you know, break it down and understand mm -hmm. that something pretty good is going to be happening to me around the age of 48 or so. It's like things are going to be opening for me. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you are now I'm trying to, uh, actually doing the math here. Hang on just a second. I, this is the exciting part of um, dead air. So actually, 
Uh, yeah, 48. So I am trying to, I, I'm not remembering actually saying that. For, was, oh, oh, oh. Okay, so that's next year. Yeah, okay. Sorry. Okay. I'm like, because I feel like you're so young. I did not, I'm like 48. She's, that won't be for another decade. I don't remember talking about that. Um, I know. I first one of my clients came in to see me and she's like, I was reading your website. How could you possibly have There's time? no way. You're yeah. Looking, you're, I, you're barely out of your 20s, man. I you're almost 30 years old, for goodness sakes. So. Yeah. Well, yeah. So, um, so you, well, okay. That's next year. Is mm -hmm. that next year? Yes. Yeah. So that is Jupiter. Jupiter is going, yeah, we just, Jupiter is going to come home. You also have um, Saturn is going to be crossing over. He, now he's been in the early degrees of Capricorn again. He's, he's in his home. So that's really bringing a lot of people back to what is real what is responsible what is you know what is my role in the world and um and so you have mercury at 10 degrees if you don't mind i mean if, if another astrologer would based on what i'm saying would probably be able to figure out your chart because i gave the degrees so is that all right with you yes. yolanda okay okay all right i always with respect because it's this is you know this is you it's aspects it's of me as written in the stars. yes 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 so saturn saturn is um will be crossing over your mercury lighting it up and in your chart your mercury is blessed to be uh trining saturn or saturn is trining your mercury so it's feeling, it's not like Mercury is affecting the Saturn as much as the outer planets are affecting the inner planets. So is Saturn Sat a little bit more polarized toward negative events? Sa okay, so Saturn has received a very um, <clears throat> kind of a bad rap, basically. Okay, he's, he's the one, historically, when something negative would happen, um, they would attribute it to Saturn. Saturn has been misunderstood and I'm, I really, so I, one of my favorite images of Saturn is, um, is something that I've made up basically, but it feels real and, um, or it's, you know, it's maybe archetypal, kind of like a myth. So my myth is that before this life, we're all in this room and we're so excited and we have our soul family around us. And this is just the last basic prep before we come to earth. And we have our guides there and demigods or whoever else is in the room. We have a lot of guidance and support angels for our coming to earth. And they are reminding us that this is our choice. We don't have to. And you do know it's hard there. You do know you will not remember who you are. You'll, you will, some people may want to leave early. Mm -hmm. It's that painful. Mm -hmm. And so just, we want you to be ready. And we're all like, we got this. We're looking at each other so excited. And we're like, you and you and I, Dr. Yolanda, we're like, I see you. We'll we'll be there. We can be we'll there for each remember. other. Yeah, yes, we'll exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And actually, truth be told, I can't think of another time in history that I would rather be here. Mm. As crazy as things seem to be out there, when we touch stone, when we touch base with with our kindreds, we know this is this is where the party is really getting exciting, yeah, right? Yeah. So, so Saturn, I see him as like, he's very tall and wearing dark black robes and has very dark eyes and maybe a crooked nose. And he is 
holding a clipboard with our individual mission that we've, as we've stated and as we're creating it, maybe even our birth chart is there so he can see the configuration of what we're going to be playing with in this lifetime, like a college curriculum. Mm -hmm. And he looks at that and then he looks at us soberly and very, you know, he, you, you know, there's no hiding from Saturn. So yeah. you're just like, okay. There's no um, humor in there either. Yeah. Very, no, very no. He's just, but he looks and then he, he says, are you sure? Are you clear? And we say, yes, I am. And we really have to enroll him. And, and then he says, okay, as you wish. Now, I will be checking in on you to make sure that you are on track with your mission as you have stated it here. I'm here to support you in that. Every 20, 29, 30 years, depending on the speed, but we have our Saturn return, okay? Oh, wow, and then our second good. Saturn return, and then our transits. He checks in, and he will be checking in on you next year which is exciting because he is um he he is training your mercury so your mercury has that support what you are doing as a career yolanda dr yolanda i it's it is my honor to look at your chart and say you are doing exactly what you're meant to be doing Oh, it's yeah. so exciting. I and so next that. year with that support, you know, Mercury is ruling communication. So you could be really working on your book next year, yeah. whatever, you know, that is. So the book, the, these videos, um, I see it expanding certainly beyond this, but this is a huge platform. So, you know, you can take your time too with that. And you're still so young. So... It's just a joy. So yeah. I, I want to see if I can explain this for somebody that's never gone to an astrologer before and doesn't understand it. So the way I understand it, before I was born, I decided on what type of life I wanted to live. And the way I would pick out my characteristics of how I would behave to certain things and when certain things would happen was based on the stars. So I picked a period of time that I wanted to be born. So you guys have to remember, time's not linear. So when you're choosing a life, it could be anywhere. It has nothing whatsoever to do with linear time. So like me, I applied for a slice of time for January 24th, 1971, to be born to these parents under certain aspects to face certain challenges and to do certain things. Is that about sum that up? Yeah. That, that is beautiful. That is, so yes. yes. You go yes. to an astrologer, a yes. quantum astrologer like Elise, she can lay that all out for you. And it's really a beginning of your remembering who you are and why you chose that slice of time. Yes, yes, exactly. And I, I want to make sure that I fully explain the quant. I, I started to, con and then I went off on to, into my tangents. But the quantum part of it is that I do remember when I'm looking at a chart that this is, this is what is in 3D, but the quantum aspect is there, we can always, always move beyond this. Okay. You'll always feel, you'll always have that, that joyful moon and Sag, uh, you know, the, the more analytical Aquarius sun, that, that part of you that is here to represent equality for all a world that works for everyone mm -hmm. and but there's always higher higher octaves of of what we can work with and so when mercury's retrograde for instance i do not tell people to go and hide under a cover <laughs> you know it's it's just let's you know it's a great time to take care of any miscommunications 
you know. Definitely. So you got a model over there. You want to explain for some people what it's what sure. grade is like and what that means? Sure, absolutely. So I'm going to invite my uh, wonderful, supportive husband to come over and uh, hold one of my um, props here. Because he uh, we, hand of William. <laughs> the hand of William, yeah. Who and and um he is William is an amazing artist. He he is fantastic. The, this painting behind me um is called Torch Pass. The original is hanging at City of Hope. Oh. And um he's designed many of the graphics on my website and the astrocons that we, we sent. So yes. this is a globe which we determined is too large for the sun so we're going to put that away and um here is okay here's the earth and i don't even know which okay let's turn it toward and that's is that mercury okay you're so cute all right so if you will hold the the earth thank you love okay so here's the sun and we can still see the earth there. Okay, good. All right, so all of the planets, we're all going around the sun in a counterclockwise position on like a, on one plane, mm -hmm. okay? And Mercury and Venus are between us and the sun, so they are zipping around a lot faster than we are going, or it takes us a year to go around the sun. Mercury is going around the sun once every, like, three, four months, something like that. And so he's zipping around. When he's on the back side of the, moon, the sun and when he's like between, I'm trying to do it, okay, like this. When he is um, come around to this side of the sun, he is stationing to go direct. He spends the longest part of his travel around the sun, going around the back side of the sun. But then he comes around here and he stations to go retrograde, and then he's going between us and the sun. He is closer to us during that time. Mm -hmm. But this, but from his, our perspective, given that most of the time he's been going this way around the sun, and then he comes this way, starts to look, it looks like he's suddenly going backwards. That's mm -hmm. where the retrograde motion comes from. So all of the planets, when they are closer to us, they're retrograde. All the outer planets, when they're traveling around the sun, they take a lot longer to go. Or, okay, we've got balls. All right, so this is maybe, this is a very spiky Jupiter. Um, so he's coming around. He's taking a lot longer to go around. Takes Jupiter um, one year to go through one sign. So he's moving a lot slower. And it takes him 12 years to go all the way around the sun. Got you. So... so like our one earth year is equal to 12 years on that planet. Yes. And yes. the viewers out there as well, when the planets are in retrograde, it's a wonderful opportunity if you're not in the city and you're more in a mountain to actually witness the planet. You can see them with your bare eye, the beautiful red glow of uh, Mercury and even Venus, beautiful, beautiful kind of blue glow just lovely yes yeah mars has been we've had a real show with mars this this summer and then and of course venus has been higher in the sky she is just she's poising to go retrograde in another couple months another month and a half or so i think so october when they're retrograde do their aspects change they are still the same. Venus represents love and beauty and, um, and finances, our values. So they definitely are, she still is that and more. Now, I don't recommend, I don't recommend um, doing things that will permanently, uh, that are permanent changes in our lives that are related to Venus during a Venus retrograde. And I'll give a couple of examples, but it's, so I don't recommend getting married during Venus retrograde. Because she's closer, so the feelings and aspects are more here. So when it goes back to normal. Right, exactly. <laughs> All of a sudden those beer goggles come off and you're like, 
I had on Venus goggles. I don't really yeah. like you. <laughs> what is, yeah, what is the rose colored glasses are coming off? And right, it's, um, wow. yeah, Venus. So, no permanent makeup, no tattoos, no cosmetic surgery, because it can, it can, you know. That's just my recommendation. And an example of that is I was, William and I love to let our grease paint out every now and then. And so we had um, one of our friends at our church, Center for Spiritual Living in, in Redondo Beach, shout out to our peeps down there. Um, one of our friends there uh, 10 years ago, William and he were talking about that we should do something fun for fundraising, like let's do murder mystery or something like that. And a month later, Michael came and said, well, I wrote one. Would you like to be in it? And so we got to be one of the ones that we did was our wedding actually. And it was set in the 1930s or twenties. It was very, yeah. I'm forgetting. I think it was thirties or twenties. All right. Anyway. So, but I, I went out and got this beautiful gown and, um, I had a friend do my makeup and in the, in the style, well, the makeup was not how I would normally wear it. We were doing it for, for the time period. When I saw the pictures later, I was like, Oh, I just and she's a beautiful makeup artist she's amazing but it was anyway Venus was retrograde and I did not know at that point the um, impact that it would have so anyway cool story. so if was I guess I'm gonna ask the obvious question that probably other other people will ask if that's so a Venus when is a good time or like when are your money aspects around when's a good time to buy that lottery ticket oh my gosh any time that Venus or Jupiter are training your Sun moon ascendant or perhaps even on it, as they're transiting conjuncting Sun moon ascendant those are good times oh also God. going through the second house I didn't even think you were going to tell me there was a good time. I'm really surprised. Yes, of course. <laughs> of course. Yeah. And, and actually the, the fifth house as well, because the fifth house is, um, is our speculation. Okay. It's our, yeah, it was not skeptic. That's anyway, it's so gambling, actually fun, fun times are the fifth house. That is yeah. beautiful. So we're going to finish up. If someone were to come to you, how long does it take for you to do their, their natal chart and give them a report? Uh, um, well, it, it, it depends on my schedule because life is very full. So what happens is I reach out right away and we get ourselves on the, on the calendar. Okay. So, um, and that can be right now. I'm, I'm basically, out a couple of weeks okay. so if someone came to me today we would be scheduling for September okay. probably. And then do you do a phone conference or Skype how does that interaction happen whatever whatever they choose it's really I'm I'm I can do both it's always fun to meet in Skype and do that or we can do a phone conference and I record the calls and tell so, them if they do zoom they can have a recording too I know I know this is so fantastic so you know Skype zoom you That's know we wonderful. have this yeah and for you guys just so you know like I said I had a beautiful beautiful nail yeah. chart I had an um, interpretation of the signs and symbols on the chart as well as a comprehensive 40 page report Oh, yes. So I normally say 25 to 25 plus. You, Dr. Really? Yolanda, <laughs> she had, yeah, she had, she had more pages. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Under promise. 25 plus, uh, over 25 pages. Okay. So. Wow, it was beautiful. Thanks. And then her husband made me this beautiful, beautiful um, astrocon, which yeah. is a symbol of what the chart was, where my ascending is and where my moon is. It's just beautiful. You'll be able to see that in the end credit at the end of the video. Okay. I'm, I'm, the you get to see. Yeah. Hi. Good to meet you. Thank you so much.
much. I appreciate I your artwork. <laughs> Thank you. I can barely hear you because it's the headphone, but uh, I like the light on your face. I've seen okay. videos and it was, I can barely see you, but I, I yeah. love your face. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to get yeah. some better lighting soon, you guys. Well, is there, you have any last words for the viewers out there? Thank you so much. And, and Dr. Yolanda is so gifted. She is, she is truly doing her dharma and with her healing work as well. She's a gift in anyone's life. And I'm looking at your face down here, but I, I just thank you so much for this time. This has been wonderful and um, I appreciate it. So we, the website that you can go to for my services is astrology as above so below.com and uh, i'm trying to remember the rest of the um of the link do we yeah we we created a special a special page that is uh forward slash initial hyphen consultation hyphen package so I know that's a mouthful, but uh, I, I think we'll have that written down also as a link that they can go to. That, yes, we can that, do that. Okay, that's perfect. Well, All right, guys, sweetheart. Thank you so very oh, much. I thank you. appreciate your time. I appreciate and you. Guys, catch us on another episode of Intuitive Yes. <laughs> Good job. Have a beautiful rest of your week. Thank you.